we have a gigantic episode here for you today because there are so many important decisions to make and so many difficult decisions that are affected by weather. We're going to dive deep on how the weather can affect you, get into our starts of the week, and an incredible boom, boom kicker. Like the video, subscribe, and enjoy. The Fantasy Footballer Studio is brought to you by Samsung Galaxy. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. It's semi-championship time. There's a lot of syllables to squeeze in there. Of all the things you could have done. What would you have gone with? Something with the weather, probably. It's weather week. <laughs> but it's semi-championships. I don't but even know I, if that's an expression. I've never heard anyone ever say semi-championships yeah, ever. Yeah, semi-final. Won. There you go. <laughs> that's Whatever. the phrase. Whatever. You worked extra syllables into it. <laughs> right. It's semi-finals. That would have... That no. No, that no, Because I, I believe that the time is, in fact, the key word. <laughs> okay. Okay. Of the sentence, tilting time. I don't know. Sure, that's but that's daily. That's not, that's not a hourly. That's not a specified portion of Thursday's show. I'm sorry, it's your domain. We should just let you be you. And, it is uh, semi championship time. Okay, <laughs> come along, Foot Clan. We are now in agreement. Enjoy <laughs> semi championships. Uh, Thursday, December twenty second. Uh, we will have a football game this evening. Never not working on the show today. Maybe the most important one of the of the season. Maybe of the history of never not working. I find this to be the single most challenging week in the history of our show to give analysis for. Because uh, at least from what I understand, those of you that have chosen to follow this show on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, subscribing on YouTube, that have gone along for the ride with us. You will not necessarily accept I'm not sure as our analysis for the week. But due to the insane <laughs> weather patterns in this country for uh, what Mike would deem semi-championship weekend, yes, it is really, really hard to cut through the mess. I don't know what you're talking about. This is football weather. This is oh, when it's man. really cool and everyone's going to have a great time because, I mean, if you're a real football fan, you're going to really enjoy these 30 mile an hour the, cross, crossing winds. The advantages that, like the Jets, Cleveland, uh, I mean, the, the, the advantage that these, these teams have this specific week with the outrageous weather, it's off the charts. I'm not going. We've to, never seen it before. I'm not going to argue with anybody that a world full of domes is better for fantasy football. That is a concession I will happily make. If you remove your interests in fantasy, it can be very entertaining to watch teams battle through the elements. Uh, not all of these this week will be entertaining in that fashion, but. Um, you know, this is a high T weekend. Sure, and this will be—it'll be difficult because uh, we haven't seen a weekend quite like this. So much is on the line for your for your teams, and weather changes. I mean, yesterday on this show, as we began the episode, the wind was projected to be 13, 14 mile an hour wind in the Thursday night football game. Now you have weather advisories. You've got. 17 to 20 mile an hour winds. You have gusts that could exceed that uh, greatly. And so the weather is also changing and we're sitting here on Thursday, right? That's a 24 hour period where the advisory changes to the negative. Last week we saw it kind of move more positively with mm -hmm. the Buffalo game. And so definitive, uh, you know, guarantees right now are, are hard as well. And so you're going to have to be a fluid fantasy football player this weekend. You're going to have to make like I I'm I'm jumping right into 
the Zay Jones discussion for tonight. That's also known as the Christian Kirk discussion or the sure. Garrett, Garrett Wilson discussion, the Devin, Trevor Lawrence discussion. Evan Ingram discussion. Yeah. And so um, I might legitimately be turning the television on tonight before I make that call. See so if you can see the uh, the wind flags I just, moving around I there want, on the pylons. You know, because there's some talk about – the heavy rain coming in the second half, right? And so, you know, we got enough out of Buffalo in three quarters before the snow came down. Like, there are – there's nuance, and Jason is taking us through it all on Never Not Working today, which I am desperate to receive this information. So I know it will be edifying to the listeners out there. But, you you know, these decisions are tough enough on week six, week seven, if you had them. Now it's semifinal week. The second guessing – I mean, those monsters, they live under the beds of fantasy football players. Maybe you should have started somebody else this week. <laughs> you know, yeah. th that's the creepy monster that, you know, lives oh. under the bed for fantasy players. I know that monster well. He's in the closet. He's yeah. under the bed. He's in the backyard, peeking over the fence. He's everywhere. Mine's a lower voice, though. Oh, really? Like, yeah. yeah. Oh, like okay. You can barely make out what he's mine, saying. Mine, much more goblin. <laughs> Yours is, yeah. yeah, his is goblin. Yours is more uh, Buffalo, Buffalo Bill. Bill. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. boy. Yeah. Slash Andrew Luck. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wait, is, it, is, is it Andrew, Andrew Luck? <laughs> Does he live in my house? I think he's the fantasy football monster. That's how he's been saving all his money. Uh, <laughs> that's what you should have started the other guy. <laughs> You'll never make the right decision. <laughs> all right. Uh a uh, quick reminder before we jump into the never not working, and obviously we got a million matchups to get through. We got starts of the week, lots going on, and uh, Jason's boom boom kicker last week was electric, so we we need to get to that as well. But uh, a reminder: it is uh, it's Christmas weekend. We will not have a Sunday live this weekend. We've got the main slate of games on Saturday, games on Sunday, family but, time. But you can always go to christmasfootball.com for the that latest, greatest information. Oh, okay. I forgot. Yeah. yeah. That's a good website. Good work. That's a yeah. really good website. So, what uh, was the, what, Christmasfootball.com? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's incredible. an incredible website. Yeah. Christmasfootball.com. Uh, let's move on. Let's do it. Let's get into it. Jason, teach me. <clears throat> Never not working. Presented by Head & Shoulders, Scalp Shield Technology. Available at Walmart. All right. Well, it is weather week. Um, and f f to give you a good example here um, of how the weather is this week, Kevin Roth, probably one of the most uh, well-known weather people in the uh, fantasy football industry and actual meteorologist, does uh, some great work for uh, Roto Grinders. He said... This is without a doubt one of the worst, if not the single worst week of weather he's ever seen in the NFL. He's been doing this a long time. So we wanted to get into what do we need to worry about? What do we not need to worry about? What tweaks can we uh, make going forward? And here is, after doing some deep dive data research, here is the d digestible end result nuggets that you need to know. Uh, dating back to 2000, we took a look at every game to see if the totals of the games were affected let's start with temperature temperature is mostly irrelevant it does not really have an effect on game totals within the game so if you look at games that are sub 30 degrees 42.7 total nfl points scored is the average if you get below 20 degrees it's 41 so it's like a point different if you get below 10 degrees it's 41.8, it goes up a little. They're all right around the same. The average of the scores in these cold weather games is fine. And if you think about our normal weekly process, where we're saying the Vegas lines, 42.5-ish, that's very average. That's just a normal sure. average game. They're not the wonderful barn burner 50-point uh, extravaganzas, but they're also not you know the, the 37 points. So I don't worry about seeing cold weather games uh, that don't have wind what will have an effect is that the running game is usually improved. Uh, I've seen some reports about yards after contact in sub uh, in 20 degree, sub 30 degree weather being better for running backs. And that just yeah. makes sense, right? Because it, guys, guys, it hurts when you get hit. Yeah. Cold guys trying to tackle an ice block is not quite as fun. Uh, so maybe bump up uh, some of those running backs in cold weather games. Now, let's talk about rain. 
precipitation. That has a negative effect on passing games. Unfortunately, the data, it, it we don't have a great example of not all rain is the same. Sometimes it's right. a rainy game and it's fine. And you, I've seen big fantasy performances in rain. And sometimes it's extremely heavy rain uh, where, you know, it's it's a nightmare. And usually those rainy games that are a nightmare, it's actually still the wind that is the problem. Here's what rain does to the passing game. Completion percentages usually drop to 57% on average. Passing yardage drops from 240 on average to 216 passing yards. So you look at the passing games and you say, okay, well, they, they could still do enough, but you got, you're got you not having your giant big performances. Better get in the end zone if you have those, those wide receivers. Exactly. Now let's talk about the real elephant in the room, the real problem, sustained wind. This is what you need to look at. Snow gets all the glory. All the weather weekends, all the football love of of oh, it's a, you know it's a real football game, but wind is the actual Andrew Luck monster here. <laughs> Fifteen plus mile an hour sustained winds is when things start changing game plans. Deep passes are tough. The kicking game is very difficult, and anything over twenty mile an hour sustained winds that becomes a major problem. It goes from we're affecting the game to rut row passing game pretty much is not going to work well. Passing attempts, they fall off significantly during windy games, which is not the case for cold weather games, even if the efficiency still goes down a little bit there. How predictable can we be with the timing? Wind, we can usually know a day or two out. Obviously, the wind changed here from yesterday to today, but when we're projecting wind, it is easier to be right and accurate of that than it is over rain. Rain, because rain, literally, we're talking about a stadium. It's it, It's got to be in that exact spot during those exact windows of the game that is being played. So that is much more difficult, you you know, even a few hours ahead of the game. Um, now let's look at this week and how it applies. Here's the cold games that aren't major wind. Seattle at Kansas City, super cold, 10 degrees, but very light winds, so I'm not worried. I'm not... Uh, I'm not, you know, getting off of. You're not abandoning. I'm not abandoning abandoning any of the passing game here. I will slightly bump up some of the 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 running games. Maybe uh, Pacheco and uh, Kenneth Walker have a slightly better game. Cincinnati at New England, Atlanta at Baltimore, the Raiders at the Steelers. These games are going to be very very cold, around 20 degrees. Not major winds. I'm not worried. Again, slight bump up to the running game. And then the Houston at Tennessee game. <laughs> yeah, baby. Oh, if there's a team that's going to make business decisions about not tackling the biggest, strongest guy in cold weather in Tennessee. Oh, come on, Yeti. It's time to eat. Uh, Derrick Henry should have a good game is what I'm saying. Yeah, if you're looking across the aisle and see you're matched up against Derrick Henry, you better, you, you better enter whatever spiritual... <laughs> decisions and 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 asks that you possibly can right now because oh, you're in trouble except your l um <laughs> and move on don't don't take that from me um the major win games this week there's two and a half of them we'll say new orleans at cleveland this is the real nightmare game uh it, it could get 10 degrees with winds up to 30 miles an hour we're talking sustained winds uh massive gusts below that Total has dropped to the lowest over-under in a decade. This is going to be a game where there isn't a pass. Like, I won't be starting anyone in the passing games in that. I, I don't know how you guys feel if there's a specific player. You're like, well, what none about? Of, none of them are top tier. I mean, especially because Chris Olave is falling off. Like, no one in this game, I feel like, is a absolute must start before the There's weather no Jefferson's chases right. digs, digs in these games. Like, so let's talk about the next game. Go ahead. The Buffalo Bills go to Chicago. Well, you got Stephon Diggs in here. It could get to 10 degrees. There's rain, possible snow, and winds of 20-plus miles an hour. So in this game, um, the quarterback situation is fantastic here. You couldn't ask for anything better than, the, than two of the most mobile running quarterbacks in the league. I am not worried at all about Justin Fields or Josh Allen because 
they could each have 100 rushing yards. They don't need to throw the ball to have good fantasy games. Maybe their full upside is slightly nerfed, but they're not going to have a bad game. I'm not viewing them any differently. Stephon Diggs. I don't think he has a phenomenal game, but there's no way I'm benching Stephon Diggs. It's not that they're not going to throw the ball at all or they can't. And if you tell me who in the NFL can throw it through the cutting winds is Josh Allen and his cannon. But players like Gabe Davis kind of, you know, you go, oh, can I? Can I not? Uh, he only gets a certain amount of shots a game, and if right. the wind affects some of those. Mm -hmm. Cole Komet has been kind of on the Cold end. this week. Oh. Cold Komet. Um so, the, you know, those guys... Volcomo does not like to be cold. Yeah, those guys are, are off. And then the final game to discuss is the one we talked about yesterday, which is happening tonight. Uh, the, the, the tilt for tonight's game, because of the kind of how it establishes your week, mm -hmm. it's, ex it's extreme. You could just avoid it, right? Like, you could opt out. But there are some really big players in this game that people have counted on. Garrett Wilson, Zay Jones, Christian Kirk, Travis Etienne, Trevor Lawrence... Your you know, advice. the wind advisory right now. Yeah, give it give it to me. The wind advisory technically begins 10 p.m. Thursday to 10 p.m. Friday, and it says south winds 20 to 30 miles an hour, gusts up to 55. Wait, 10 p.m. tonight? <laughs> yeah. Eastern? But that's eastern. So, mm. um, you know, and that's for portions of southern Connecticut, northeast New Jersey, and southeast New York. So this is a little bit more of that you don't know exactly where – you're going to be. I've seen the the most recent projection I've seen on wind is about 15 to 16 miles an hour sustained. So, so that will have, if it's in that 15 to 20 mile an hour range, it will have an effect, but it will not destroy it. So you've got to, you've got to make that decision. And honestly, I think the best advice we can give you while we're recording this Thursday morning is what Andy already said he is personally going to do. You got to turn that TV on. You've got to hop on your phone and look through Twitter. There will be videos if it's gnarly. If it's gnarly, that'll be your timeline. We'll be sharing those on the fans. I'll tell you what I'm doing, too, on Twitter. Yeah. You so, know, I'll, I'll post. I'll, I'll post exactly whether I'm playing Zay Jones or not tonight. And really, that is, and I know it sucks because it's the Christmas weekend. You're going to have family. You're going to have things going on. But whenever you can just but pop in a few minutes priorities. ahead. Priorities. <laughs> right. Uh, what do you want for Christmas? Yeah. Tell him you want a fantasy championship, so I'm going to need to – look, wrap my phone so I can unwrap it and get on and take a look. I thought you might need to save some some Christmas morning presents uh, in advance in case you need Ooh, them as, like, pick-me-ups through the weekend. <laughs> oh, you thought you opened your whole, your whole entourage oh, of presents? Did you lose, honey? Here's the couple I held back. Um, so, in summary, you're saying in cold temperatures, expect fewer overall plays, passing games, get the downgrade. Um, a little bit, just a little, just a little, a little bit ski running games, get more volume, more volume in the running games. And then in games with sustained wins, fade those passing games, unless you have, I guess I would say unbenchable options that are, too, it's too risky to put a Stefan Diggs on your bench on what Mike would call semi championship weekend. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank goodness this, the, the, oh like, boy, if it was like a Justin Herbert, Joe Burrow game. What a nightmare that would be for pocket passing quarterbacks. Thank goodness it's Fields versus honestly, Josh Allen. Honestly, it's a huge difference. And uh, you can follow us on Twitter. We'll be sharing stuff. Uh, Jason at Jason FFL, Mike at FF Hitman. And I'll, uh, I'll post what I do with Zay Jones at Andy Holloway tonight. Main account is at the FF Ballers. That was insightful. It's what we need this week. Uh, get up to 100% dandruff protection that is never not working with head and shoulder scalp shield technology available at walmart.com use it every time you shampoo and see the difference news and notes from around the league presented by USAA insurance See, the fire is so delightful, but the weather outside is frightful mm, yeah man, that's they've where been the singing song, about this for years yeah it's all about <laughs> Your football team on Christmas Day. It's gonna be gonna be. Pr I think we're gonna remember this weekend. Let me let me put it that way. I think this is gonna be one of those weekends we remember. We might not wish it to be, but I think it is. <laughs> Jokes on you. I remember nothing. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good because Eagles head coach Nick oh. Sirianni has said, uh, "Quote: It looks like it's gonna be Gardner Minshew." When asked about the quarterback situation, it's the writing was on the wall. But you know the hopes that we. We hold out for these players. 
Um, Gardner Minshew in place of Jalen Hurts. It's going to be a a nervous downgrade to the offense. Um, you know, if anything, you know, do they depend a little bit more on Miles Sanders than we saw last week? I don't know if you're going to be able to do that. You're going to try, but you're going to play your AJ Brown. You're probably going to look at your options with Dallas Goddard, and and we'll get into it uh, more on the matchup. But unfortunate, big weekend, no Jalen Hurts, Jason. Yep, it is. It 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 really stinks, and the fact that they are in a nice air conditioned, controlled environment just makes Gardner Minshew Minshew all the more uh, appealing as a pivot option. Yeah, and it's it's a tough one because he could have some success. Tough defense, uh, you know, on the road. I it's going to be fun. We'll break it down. Uh, Ryan Tannehill. Seems like his season might be over. Mm -hmm. He hasn't been practicing. Uh, you're going to get a downgrade for all the passing options. I just don't – what makes what Derrick Henry does to Houston so amazing is that he already did it with Malik Willis this year. And to me, I would imagine if you told 11 defensive players to tackle one person, they could do it sufficiently just to see what Malik Willis can do in the passing game. And yet they still can't. Well, so the Texans can't. The Texans I'm speaking of. Yeah. yeah. Um, Nick Chubb didn't practice for a second straight day. Uh oh The team is still optimistic he will play, but wants you to be scared and nervous. Uh-oh. Amari Cooper also did not practice. But we're not playing Amari Cooper. True. Right. Um, Kenneth Walker did not practice Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Yeah, that's a little, uh, little scary, but he's been dealing with the ankle issue, and they – released Tony Jones I saw some beat and Homer yeah I saw some Which beat wild. reporters yeah. saying that that gives them confidence in the health of Kenneth Walker Noah Fant didn't practice didn't practice and then this one's big Marquise Goodwin had a uh he had a limited practice but it was not based on an ankle injury the limited practice was based on a wrist injury and then he ended up with a limited practice due to an ankle so, Marquis Goodwin, if there's any doubt around him, I think you have to just go away from that secret little opportunity. Personally. Does, it, does it push you away from Geno? Yeah, that's a question I have. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is a big deal because I talked about it at the beginning of the week. Yeah. Well, Noah with Fant my... is also important to the passing game, and he hasn't practiced in two days, and Kenneth Walker is important to the offense. Like. You know, there, there's only so much you're going to be able to do with with tertiary options and and DK Metcalf. Oh man, it's it's a real in, challenge, in and you're in weather. Arrowhead. Like this is not a friendly environment. Let me just ask you a simple question. Yes, who would you start, Geno Smith or Gardner Minshew? Let's just say if like semi championship week was on the line. <laughs> I look. I know you have Devontae Smith. The weapons that Gardner has, they're they're mighty and strong. Then they're much better than what you have right now with DK and no one. Uh, excuse me, Laquan Treadwell, former first rounder. Start the right one, Jason. <laughs> That's all I'm hearing. That's all I'm hearing is You'll probably win or lose by the difference between the two cornerbacks. Yeah. Okay. More news. Cole McCoy officially ruled out. Trace McSorley will start against the Bucks. I wanted to give a little bit of a history lesson on Trace McSorley. He was a six-round draft pick drafted by the Ravens. Comes out of Penn State. Senior season in Penn State ran for almost 800 yards on the ground. When you know he's coming into this first start of his NFL career, uh, I do believe Arizona is going to have a more defined Trace McSorley game plan uh, for him, which will include his legs, right, and moving the football sure. – um, you know, and getting getting outside the pocket. So I, I'm not going to eliminate the possibility that this game for Trace McSor McSorley himself is, is better than we saw last week. I'm still playing DeAndre Hopkins. But beyond that, like the Hollywood Brown situation, I'm really nervous about um, Jason. I think it was on the Sunday or it was, it was the party it, it room. It was the party room. Uh, I went through and looked at the specifics of Trace McSorley when he was targeting DeAndre Hopkins. So, you know, for clarity on that, he started basically the second half, played pretty much exactly half the game. He targeted DeAndre Hopkins six times in the half. So if you 
extrapolate that out and say 12 targets, that is phenomenal. He only completed three of those, though, for 28 yards. So, you know, would you want a six for 60 game out of Hopkins? I mean, is that what you're hoping for? It was a it was a tougher defense last week against the Denver Broncos compared to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I'm uh, I'm with Andy that I'm playing Hopkins, but yeah, maybe I make some different decisions with my flex players. No, yeah, that's a good point. When you when you don't think you have a ceiling for a certain type of player, maybe you put a ceiling in there. Um, I think that's all we have for news. Other than Zonovan Knight is technically questionable for tonight. It makes it pretty nerve wracking. But then you have this game that might be run centric. So um, it's all about your other options, right? The Zay Jones decision I have tonight. If I had Hopkins to put in, it wouldn't be much of a decision. But I don't. I have a Darius Slayton or a Tutu Atwell or, you know, it's a dynasty league where my pivot options are nerve wracking. So out, out of curiosity, if your pivot option was Michael Carter, <laughs> like which I'd running play, back? Yeah, is I'd more play Michael Carter tonight yeah. due to the injury concerns and what we saw last week with snap counts. But um, it's going to be probably shared and scary. All right. That was today's news and notes brought to you by USAA Insurance. Learn more at USAA.com slash insurance. You know, that is that is a good point, Kyle. We didn't mention Travis Etienne yesterday, and, and we didn't mention him today. People, if we miss any player, they always bring it up. But Yeah, because if they have them on their team, they want attention there. And I think that's fair with Travis Etienne tonight. Um, you know, I think you're starting Travis Etienne. Yes, that is correct. Yeah, I mean, you are starting Travis Etienne. He hasn't been great in... in difficult matchups and this is a difficult matchup so I'm not expecting huge things but he ran for over 100 yards last week and what we've talked about if the winds are more in the the you know the rain they're going to favor the running game and he is getting still like 80 percent utilization which is a dream for fantasy so I, I do think you start Travis Etienne you just have to worry about the ceiling he's sitting at the running back 21 on our weekly rankings right now, which seems, you know, he's an RB2 with uh, obviously elite upside as an athlete, could make a big play. That's what we were seeing early in the year, but we haven't seen one in a while. Into the forecast we go. Fantasy forecast. The forecast is cold. <laughs> the Night King ha approaches <laughs> and he seeks your fantasy team. Let's start with the Saturday games. Buffalo, 11-3. and three. The Bears, 3-11. and 11. Oh, palindrome. Yeah. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, Buffalo minus 8. The over-under is 40. That only gives the Bears 16 points in this one, despite being at home. The Windy City itself going to uh, impart some fear. Now, you didn't have pass catchers in Chicago that you were counting on. Yeah, that's real nice. You know, Darnell Mooney's out for the season. Claypool didn't play last week. You're not... You're not pringling this weekend. Don't pop. No, just stop. No, just the, stop. The, the only uh, pass catcher that's been in consideration has been Cole Komet, and he is out of consideration now. So, on the other side, Josh Allen's going to be in your lineup. Uh, he had a, a vintage week last week. He has elite weapons. He's been using Dawson Knox a lot more, which I think could come into – it could come into effect tonight with short area targets – you know, you want to make up for some of that wind. You've got a, a bigger player in Dawson Knox. I don't I don't really want to start him if I you know, if I can avoid it, but the Bears are pretty good against tight ends, but Dawson Knox has been coming on. Do you have any confidence in his role for tonight's or uh Saturday's game? I, I don't have great confidence um number four and number three tied in the last two weeks yeah he's gotten it done the last two weeks one of those weeks was poor weather this is you know it's it's ironic because you have a handful of guys that are in the same tier the same caliber of tight end that are all dealing with this we just talked about Cole Komet you have Evan Ingram uh David Njoku like a lot of these players who are in that questionable streaming category that all have bad weather so when you're looking at well what's the tiebreaker Usually Josh Allen is a good one, but it's hard to have confidence in receiving options Not named in a game Kelsey. like this. Yeah. yeah. Devin Singletary, James Cook, running backs for the Bills. I I like yeah. both of them in this game. 
the eight point, you know, that's a big gap. The weather, the chance that this game is put away early. Uh, I think Devin Singletary and James Cook will both get opportunities. I, I, I have, you know, what if you're choosing Raheem Mostert this week or, or either of these running backs for the Bills? Sure. We, we need a, another update on Raheem Mostert as he was not seen in – uh, I think that was the latest report we had, that he was not seen in the open portion of practice. Uh, that doesn't that doesn't rule him out by any stretch for the weekend. He could just be getting a rest day. But James Cook, man, after the – we had, the, you know, that two-week stretch where he had 11 – or, I'm sorry, 13 opportunities against Cleveland, seven against Detroit, up to 20 against the Patriots. It's, and it's it's gone down since then. You know, the five against the Jets, eight against Miami – that's total opportunities, four and five carries. I, uh, I have, I I struggle with with, with the with the, the, tra the trajectory of James Cook in the importance of you can't get this wrong. I don't think I'm putting James Cook in unless I'm really desperate. Yeah, Singletary. If you look at his carries per game, you had that down game with eight, but outside of that, thirteen this last week, thirteen the week before the eight, fourteen, eighteen, thirteen. You know, he's pretty consistent with getting uh, enough work to have a baseline. That being said, if he doesn't get touchdowns, his upside is is limited. You would expect that they're going to run a little bit more. So I think he's in flex consideration. Singletary is. I would play Singletary over Cook, even yeah. though Cook is the more explosive uh, athlete. And to go back to the question about Raheem Mostert, I looked up the official uh, injury report. He was listed for Wednesday, did not per uh did not participate with a veterans day of rest non injury okay. relief perfect and and reminder of the the practice reports this this week are pretty wacky cuz you have all the saturday games but mostert is a <clears throat> sunday game so his wednesday report was a true wednesday report mm -hmm. so much to deal yeah. with Gabe all Dave, over the place are you officially benching gabe davis based on the weather report recent history yeah yes. i'm i'm full bench gabe davis uh david montgomery's back into your lineup Yes. And then Justin Fields has been the quarterback one since week six, so if he's active, you play him. Oh, man. Uh, you just need him to run all over the place. Yeah. Try to keep this game competitive so that Josh Allen has to do more than take a few knees. <clears throat> New Orleans is 5-9. and nine. They take on the Cleveland Browns, who are 6-8. and eight. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, Cleveland minus 2.5. The over-under is 32.5. Oh, man. Um, gross. Chris Olave's... He hasn't practiced in a couple of days. You can't play Chris Olave in this game, I don't think. I know you've counted on him, and you would hope that you can, but they are so banged up. Chris Olave with the hamstring. Jarvis Landry is banged up. Andy Dalton is Andy Dalton. I mean, Alvin Kamara, you can play. Taysom Hill, you know, if you've got to run the football, yeah. he's probably going to have seven to eight opportunities on the ground. I agree couple pass attempts or pretend pass attempts. And then if you are looking for tight end, touchdown only upside, Juwan Johnson is there. Yes, it's, it's very sketchy. Uh, over on the other side, look, Nick Chubb, should he play? He's in your lineup. But for Kareem Hunt, who I believe the number is he averages, you know, 18 to 19 uh, touches or, or so in games where he has started for Nick Chubb. Where does Kareem Hunt slot in should Nick Chubb miss the game? To me, he, he slots in as a running back two, probably a lower end running back two. I would play him ahead of Travis Etienne because the matchup is a little bit better. Well, but we, won't, we won't know that. Well, right, sure. I mean, that's, so that's impossible. So like Najee Harris against the Raiders or the Kareem Hunt? I think I would stick with Najee. Um, we, we've, we've seen Kareem Hunt let us down a time or two. And with this new Voldemort led Browns team that hasn't scored any touchdowns. I mean, they, I mean, they, they've scored what hey, one, or, one or Jones two. Got one last yeah, they, week. They've got a couple of touchdowns in three weeks with this kind of weather. I have a hard time really relying on him, but he is, he is certainly a startable asset. If we know Chubb is ruled out, I ha I, I doubt he's ruled out, but obviously back to back did not participate. Uh, means that it's a real possibility. Well, and, and there is the middle ground. There's the Nick Chubb is active, but they give more workload to Kareem Hunt. So you could have a, a split sure. backfield situation there, which would be uh, a little bit frustrating 
when you consider the defensive matchup and the the weather. You're benching the wide receivers for Cleveland, both of them, Cooper and Donovan Peoples-Jones? Personally, I if I can. What I about Njoku? To, if I can bench him, I'm going to. The, the Saints, the, it's not a great matchup for, for tight ends on the season fifth in adjusted points. You're trying to get out of this game if you can. Yes. Yep. Houston's 112 and 1. They take on the Tennessee Titans, who are 7 and 7. The DraftKings Sportsbook line here is Tennessee minus 3. I'm very tempted. <laughs> yeah, I, look, I, with, with Malik Willis as the starter. Andy's almost upset of the week. It, it honestly pains me because this is not the. The resume for the Titans is they handle their business. That's the Mike Vrabel recipe. But I, we've seen two very strong performances from Houston. They've kind of, I, I would say, like piecemealed this offense together despite having no weapons, figuring out how to get the ball down the field. You know, you lose Nico Collins, you lose Damian Pierce, you lose Brandon Cooks, and then you compete with Kansas City and you compete with Dallas. It's weird. And then Malik Willis is just, he's just not it right now. No. He, and so you have to vastly limit the game plan. Like, I mean, look at the line. Tennessee minus three at home. That tells you a lot as well. over under is just 35 and a half. I think it'll be competitive. Neither team is projected for 20 points. And and that doesn't mean I want to play a Texan. <laughs> it just means that I think this game will be close. And it's more simple for fantasy than we believe. I mean, Malik Willis, they threw the ball 35% of the time in his two starts. The wide receivers had a come. Is this true, Kyle? Yeah, I this is the most it. shocking number I've ever seen. In two starts, the wide receivers for the Tennessee Titans combined for one point six total fantasy points. It was what? just Robert Woods. That's it. He's so, the only one. That so, like past. a catch, a catch for Robert Woods in two games. Uh, it was two, but not good. So, I mean, you can't have confidence in yeah. anybody but Derrick Henry on the tight. Yeah, the, on the Titans side. The implied team total for the Tennessee Titans is nineteen points, which means the implied. Uh, point NFL point total for Derrick Henry is about 19 points. Right. Yeah. Because hopefully three touchdowns. Missed last touchdowns. last four games versus Houston: two eleven and three, two twelve and three, two fifty and two, two nineteen and two. I mean that's that's insane. That your worst game against Houston was two nineteen and two. Yeah, get it together. That's your worst game. Yeah, two hundred nineteen rushing yards and two touchdowns. That's all you got. Henry, we want more. I want 303. Yeah, I think it's reasonable to ask him at this point. He settled into kind of stagnation. Yeah. Well, how uh, rude. It, it is funny. In this game, I think genuinely for semi-championship week, you're starting Derrick Henry, and that's it from both teams. Now, that's not to say that there aren't uh, diamonds in the rough to be found, Jordan Aikens and a DFS dart throw type of, you know, someone is going to throw the ball on, on Tennessee um, but for normal playoff home leagues, your main fantasy leagues, I don't think you're playing a single asset outside of Derrick Henry. Yeah, Brandon Cooks did practice in full. He is expected to make a return. Chris Moore, I think, will be out there as well. What's been interesting is Chris Moore's production has come in the slot, in, except for when Nico Collins and Brandon Cooks were out. So he may move back into the slot. Brandon Cooks on the outside. Not a lot of confidence. The running back matchup is terrible in the running back committee for the Houston Texans is very messy. Uh, yeah, you with, can't start including anybody. Royce Freeman now. So there that I, says it all. Yeah, I don't think there's there I don't think there's a a safe volume bet for the Texans. Um we oh, did get breaking okay. news that Nick Chubb and go. Miles Garrett are back at practice today. That's big. Yeah. So uh Nick Chubb should have an opportunity to get out there. The Seattle Seahawks at seven and seven now, taking on the eleven and three Kansas City Chiefs. Peach Cobbler, Andy Reid, head to head. Kansas City minus ten is the DraftKings sportsbook line. The over unders forty nine points. Kansas City first in pass rate over expectation, fourth highest pass rate when leading. They've de they've determined now that their best running game is to also use the passing game, and just let Jarek McKinnon take short dump offs and run wild. I like both running backs for Kansas City this week. Sure. Um and and we will talk about them later. Oh. But McKinnon two straight weeks at number 1, Seattle's 31st on the season against opposing running backs. 
32nd over the last six weeks, upping the ante, trying to take the top spot for the best matchup against running backs. And this is the coldest game of the week. Not necessarily the coldest feels like because it's not as windy, but this is going to be in the single digits. This is a an exceptionally cold game. That will mean that the tackling of running backs will be a little bit more difficult. I think that's part of why we like Walker, Pacheco, and McKinnon. Now, Seattle, you talked about Geno Smith, that situation. The implied point total here is the same as the Titans game. So they're at 19.5 implied points. Geno Smith has an opportunity, but it's DK Metcalf he has to lean on, and I am, I'm a little nervous about this. Uh, you know, the Chiefs match up by nature. They score a lot, so they give you an opportunity to kind of accumulate, I would say. And so that's a very big possibility. But I guess I'm nervous with the fact that you don't have Tyler Lockett, who is such a third-down go-to receiver. Goodwin's banged up. Kenneth Walker's missing practice. And, you know, it's been a while since we've seen the elite performances from him. I think I might stand opposed to your guys' perspective on the Seattle side in this game where I just think the the weapons – being an Arrowhead, the cold weather, I'm not optimistic anymore. For Geno. Yeah, I'm not as optimistic for Geno and the offense. Like, I think Metcalf is a must-start. Like, he's he's guaranteed 10 to 15 targets in this game, trying to keep up, and that might be enough, right, to make Geno, uh, you know, solid. But I, I guess I'm just nervous of the downside that I didn't see before the loss of Lockett and Goodwin potentially. Yeah, I I totally see that point of view. Uh, just a quick reminder here, uh, Russell Wilson, quarterback three on the week, Russell Wilson, quarterback three in not a full game against the Kansas city chiefs. He completed 23 passes, 250 yards, three touchdowns. They just, this team is, is not only beatable, but like just, it's so necessary that I will still continue it. Look, Geno Smith leads the NFL in completion rate. He's playing fantastic would be far more confident should pro bowler geno smith is what you meant to say well there you go i'd be far more confident should tyler lockett be out there uh we still need we need more status on marquise goodwin uh who if you recall marquise goodwin back when dk metcalf had to leave the game Goodwin was the one who stepped up had himself a fine time good, good enough good enough in this matchup against good the enough Chiefs. win so <laughs> nice <laughs> nice uh so i i still have in in this in the craziness of this week of scrambling to try to, f to find a quarterback, I still have the confidence in Geno. At the end of the games, regardless of whether the Kansas City Chiefs defense plays better or looks good or has some, uh, you know, uh, pass rush this game, I'm I'm looking at their their game logs, schedule adjusted for their opponent. There's been one game all year that they have actually been effective and caused a bad game for their quarterback that quarterback was Malik Willis the backup quarterback for the Tennessee Titans Houston scored seven more fantasy points than uh their usual output uh against them obviously Russell Wilson did you just uh, talked about that so it I'm genuinely struggling because this freezing temperature game without the weapons Andy I, I find myself more and more where you're saying you were, where you go, DK Metcalf probably isn't enough by himself. You know, Tyler Lockett's, you know, 1110 touchdown uh, season pace. Y you delete that out. I need Goodwin to step up. It's ironic because my opponent this week picked up Goodwin to play, but I'm more upset of losing Goodwin because I, I want to have a quarterback. It's tough. I mean, I, I, I hear the numbers, but if you're shorthanded at wide receiver, what what is the, where does Pete Carroll go? What does he always do? He retracts into that running game. Sure. And what do you do against the Chiefs to beat him? Take the ball out of their hand. So you're going to try to run the football. That's you know it's going to be a tall task. It's going to be a fun game to to see the outcome of Patrick Mahomes. You play him. We already talked about the running backs. Juju and no one else at the wide receiver room for the Chiefs. Correct. Travis Kelsey. Yep. You're in on Kelsey this week. Yeah. Not only Bold. will I start Travis Kelsey. But it's a great matchup, and I think he'll be top 10 for sure. Start of the week. 
<laughs> yeah, I would make him start. <laughs> He's going to be the, the year. He, yeah, start of the year this week. He w- he will absolutely dominate. I the was Seahawks. genuinely disappointed with ten for one hundred and five last week from Travis Kelsey. <laughs> I think that most- is the standard that he has put. <laughs> oh, so snooty. <laughs> I know. I mean, if you have an interest in in this game, a hundred yards, going, Travis, going good for fantasy. You need Seattle's offense to do the job. So I, I like hearing that you have confidence in that. The Giants are eight five and one. They take on the Minnesota Vikings, who are eleven and three. The DraftKings Sportsbook line here: Minnesota minus four and a half. The over under is forty eight. We already have one of the best quotes of the year. I don't know if you guys caught this one yesterday. No. Uh, Wink Martindale, the the Giants defensive coordinator, he was being asked against going against Kevin O'Connell's Vikings. He said, "Quote: It's unfair. I'm the blue collar guy." Going against Harry Styles. Oh yes, I like it. I like it. Kevin O'Connell's the new the new hotness. <laughs> this guy's name's Wink, so we we're where we need to be. Is uh, it? Okay, uh, sorry. So yeah, that, that plays uh, really but, well but, on podcasts. No, it's it's not. It's it's a strange thing to like. You go like, what nickname could I go with? Well, I know I'll go with that game show guy. Wink? Yeah, Wink Martindale was a game show host. Really? Yes. That exact name? Yes. What is what is Wink Martindale's true first name, Kyle? You're- the game show host? No, 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 no. Because <laughs> that's Winston, but I'll get to the coach. Okay. <laughs> wait, wait. You don't know the NFL coach, but you know the well, real he, name he for Wink Martindale. he looked up Wink Martindale, and he okay. didn't get the one he wanted, All I'm right, sure. Okay. I'm correct, sure, correct. I'm sure that's what that is. Um, but no, do some... <laughs> What? what was that? What is that? Was that I, supposed to be a game show sound? That's wink. That's w- did you? Oh, that's a wink. That's did, a wink. Oh, is that from the spitballers? Yeah. Whenever we <laughs> let's yeah. hear it. Let's hear it again. Yeah, we 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 pulled that thing off a of Napster. <laughs> okay. The guns. Yeah, let's leave the guns out of it. <laughs> Sorry, hey, that was Jason, my fault. Jason triggered him, man. It's not me. Okay, <laughs> this has gone off the rails. Um, Kirk Cousins, four hundred and four last week, greatest comeback in history. Dalvin Cook, he looked great on the ground last week it's amazing how the don Don martindale and he went to wink yeah he's like hey that game show guy he's got something going on i'm that guy well i'm I'm guessing (laughs) maybe when he was younger somebody chose that uh dalvin cook i want to mention this if you notice what happened last week when the game was in peril you couldn't find alexander madison they had him escorted to another adjacent stadium i mean there were no snaps to be had when push came to shove, it was all Dalvin Cook. So you like to see that. You like to see his performance in the screen game. I still think they have not gone to that enough, and that is why Dalvin has not been a week-in and week-out guarantee. But maybe they will after they see that success. This is a good matchup now. We've gone from bad matchup Giants in the beginning of the year to completely bona fide great matchup for all opposing offenses. Yeah, they they uh, they allow the highest yards per carry of any team in the league Dalvin Cook will have chunk play after chunk play after chunk play. Um, he, he was, I mean, if you've got him in the playoffs, you're sitting pretty. Justin Jefferson, yes, sir. Are we chasing the KG Osborne? I feel like there are people out there that want to do this. Look, they were down 33 to nothing last week. They had to throw the ball an insane amount, 460 plus passing yards for Dalvin Cook just to try to get back in, or for uh, Kirk Cousins, just to try to get back in this game. I am not personally chasing the KJ Osborne breakout in the fantasy playoffs. If you want to pick him up and and maybe hope that there's been a change, okay. But last week was a like a legitimate. I mean, it was the the biggest comeback in NFL history. It's it's an outlier game. Previously on the entirety of the season, KJ Osborne has surpassed fifty receiving yards one time, and that was back in week three. Yeah, just one of those. uh, I'm not chasing. Yeah, I agree. Darius Slayton on the other side at the wide receiver, um, in the wide receiver room. Tough week last week against a very good Washington defense. But Richie James, Isaiah Hodgins, those are more possession receivers. Darius Slayton is your electricity. He's your lightning bolt. Do we see a big game from Darius Slayton against the 32nd-ranked Vikings defense? Well, are you talking about like when you adjust for schedule on the course of the year, or are you talking about like over the last six weeks? I'm guessing they're dead last in both. They are dead last oh. in both. So how do you how might one muster the courage against the Andrew Luck monster to bench a player like, I don't know, Zay Jones and roll out Darius Slayton this week? Is that the kind 
Okay. We go live. It's me, Zay Jones. I can, I can barely see you through the rain and the wind. Bitch, me. Bitch, I'm blowing away. <laughs> Is that the kind of uh, convincing that you needed, Kyle? You already got there with this. Oh, I benched Zay early in the week. I'm all Team Slayton. <laughs> Gosh dang it. I need to do that, don't I? Okay, so I'll read you off some numbers, okay? Yes. So since the bye week... Other than sounds, how can you convince me? <laughs> well, this this is Darius Slayton. So since the bye week, Houston, you know, plus matchup for for offenses and wide receivers. Uh, we had wide receiver 11 because he hit the big play. Next week against Detroit, plus matchup, wide receiver 22. Dallas, tough, four, 49. Washington, not great, wide receiver 24. Philly, tough, 59. Washington, 57. Since the bye week when he's had a plus matchup, he has come through for fantasy purposes. And that, that's that's what he feels like to me, someone who can take advantage of the worst perimeter defense in the NFL. It takes you one play. You just have to have the big play with it him. Yeah, it takes one play. It He has been seeing volume. You know, in that yeah, time, seven targets even last week. In that time period, I, I was quoting since the bye week, he is averaging six targets a game. Which You guys he, sound like me a few weeks ago. This is where I was with Darius Slayton before – a couple of bad games as I was I was constantly in his corner. You were hoping that he was matchup proof. Yeah. But he's not. Yeah, and, and you also have a situation where Minnesota's gonna score at home. So you, you you look at this and you can't they can't ride Saquon Barkley. So you know, Darius Slayton playoff hero, could we be there? Uh Mike thinks so. Uh I mean possible because next week is the Colts. Daniel Jones, solid streamer this week because yeah. of the matchup, the uh the over under is forty eight points. We're not getting a lot of that this week. Nope. Thank you, Dome. Oh, thank you, Dome. Uh, I was just looking this up. Right now, uh, it is negative eight degrees in Minneapolis uh, with a winter storm warning. Oh, man. So, irrelevant. Irrelevant. There as long is as a, they can get there. There is a roof. Thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah, this could be one of the better games of the week. So, Dalvin Cook, Justin Jefferson. Hawkinson? Hawkinson is great, yeah, with all the... Ready well, to Hawkinson? Well, I don't know that he's a great player. But no, 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 uh, no. But he's, no, but he's it, a great play. Yes, uh, should have the targets and has the weather, so... Are you uh, hawking around the Christmas tree? Oh, possible. Possible. I can okay. see it. That's all I got for you. <laughs> Cincinnati, 10-4, and four, New England, 7-7. Seven and seven, DraftKings Sportsbook line. Cincinnati, minus three. The over-under is 41.5. We're back. We're back. Get that low over under. Yeah. Uh, get that cold weather game. Cincinnati, six straight wins, getting healthier, playing well, battling back, getting it done. New England, lateral, lateral, lateral. <laughs> <laughs> um, what do you do here, guys? I mean, you, you're starting your Cincinnati Bengals. You are. Uh, you, may, you may not love the Patriots matchup, but Jamar Chase, T. Higgins are in. Joe Mixon, play him oh, with man. one eye closed. Two. Two eyes closed. Yeah. Last two games, 16 and 17 opportunities, yet on the year 30% of his fantasy production came in one game. Joe Burrow, you could do better than the New England matchup, but you're, you, you have Joe Burrow for a reason. It's really ironic. Joe Mixon's baseline is pretty good. You know, I can't see him getting fewer than seven fantasy points. He just touches the ball too much but if he doesn't get in the end zone his ceiling seems like it's like 12 points and I'm, I'm sitting here comparing him to someone in my head like uh, Devin Singletary we look at Joe Mixon as a superstar and Devin Singletary is like a bench guy that maybe you could flex in but they seem like they've got similar outputs this week especially when you're you're factoring in the Patriots defense um, and you know what they've done to running backs on this season yeah, that you know, it's the opportunities that I'm going to lean on there. I, I don't disagree with the potential outputs at all. I I worry that you know you could get what you got two weeks ago with James Cook or three weeks ago, where suddenly he pops in and Singletary pops out just because of matchups. And I don't I don't know. I think Mixon's got to be in your lineup. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm trying to look at options, players that you might have. And what we're I think where you go Pacheco, you know, that would be an interesting conversation. So there's, McKinnon. there's, there's three players that popped out to me and they are, I don't know, spoiler, whatever you're on the episode. 
but it's our three starts of the week. Like I would start all three of our starts of the week over Joe Mixon, which is um, you're going to have to wait a couple more minutes to find out who they are. <laughs> okay. How's that for a pro tease? Perfect. Ramondre, play him. 172 yep. yards last week. Uh, the Bengals on the year 22nd against running backs, even though they've been better of late. You play Ramondre. Uh, we have a limited practice for Damian Harris. We thought we were getting him back last week, so I would not be surprised if he's ruled out again. Sure. Mac Jones, don't think about it. Whiteouts, don't think about it. Hunter Henry, I, I only if you're desperate. I've got a, my start of the week, which I'm not telling you yet. Right, I would play. You. I'd play wow. over Hunter Henry, which they, which is a deep cut. The the way I'm playing, We're telling Hunter, you nothing on this show. By the way, way, I'm playing Hunter Henry is if if my fantasy tight end is in one of the 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 wind games. And Dawson just, Knox or Hunter Henry? Oh wow, that's Knox for me. I would definitely go Knox. I think I would land on Knox. In Joku or I, Hunter Henry? I'd go to Hunter Henry. Okay. Because that's the big weather game. Detroit seven and seven, Carolina's five and nine. The DraftKings sportsbook line: Detroit minus three. Over under is forty three and a half. I mean, let's go Lions. <laughs> yeah, I, I, uh, this is the new America's team. I feel like everyone is rooting for the Lions. They are guns so, Mahoney. They are so fun to watch. They are so likable to a person. I mean, if you don't like the Lions, then you must be you have a DeAndre, divisional. You have, no, you have DeAndre Swift on your fantasy football oh, okay. team. You're, you're bitter? Because I want to love the Lions. I want, like, the redemption story of Jared Goff just shipped out of town, playing great, could play. I mean, what is what was the record? It was like 1-6, and six and now they turned it around where they they can make the playoffs. I can't remember the exact They're seven numbers. and seven right now but, and they, they but, have their destiny, but they opened up the season just buried. And Jameson Williams is like a super interesting young prospect. You know, I've got a soft spot in my heart for DJ Chark. Like I love everything about this team and yet having traded for and, uh, rode with Deandre Swift for half of a season. You're not in your semi championship weekend, correct? <laughs> and and uh, no semi champ kind of life for you. And the 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 burns that DeAndre fantasy burns that DeAndre Swift have has given me are third degree. Well, and you I, love Jamal Williams, all right? You love that I personality. Do. I I like everyone on this team I think this except is on for you. DeAndre Swift. You should not have traded for him. Oh, uh, clearly, <laughs> <laughs> you would have been so much happier with the Lions. But to answer your question, Mike, they've won six of their last seven. The only game they lost in that stretch is a three-point last-second loss to the Buffalo Bills. Right. I don't like this. Uh, I see this bullet point here that Kyle decided to throw into our show, Doc. It says, bench this week for Jared Goff. I'm not benching Jared Goff this week with the options you have at quarterback. I think Jared Goff's going to be fine. I agree. Jared Goff has got uh, elite, elite wide receiver weapons in a matchup where you know the, the Panthers' defense – I think it's, it's they're not garbage, but the this road. is an important game. It, it is, but it's it's he's just it's the road it's, home situation. It's road yeah. Jared Goff. We got road Jared Goff performing well a couple weeks ago, didn't we? Uh, didn't we finally get a road Jared Goff game? No. Nope, we didn't. No, he has he has been truly bad on the road. That being said, so th this is one hundred percent true. He's been truly bad on the road all year. It's a very Amari Cooper situation. But if you look at a lot of those road games at New England, at Dallas. Um, he the the, the at one, Chicago. That one is the one that is really upsetting. At New York Giants. Uh, the New York New York's got a decent enough defense. I'm no, I'm not too worried about that. Now. And this last week was at the Jets, who have a great defense. Yes, I I still like my Lions in this game. It's a consequ oh, your Lions. <laughs> it's a consequential game for Detroit, and it's a beatable defense. So I'm going to play DeAndre Swift with. Uh, oh, a level of you, enthusiasm. You go for it, brother. Nine targets last week. Yeah, how'd that work out? Nine targets last week for DeAndre Swift. He, he didn't have an awful week, did he? Uh, running back 30. Hmm. How is that possible with nine exactly. targets? Exactly. This is why I hate him. Not to mention Seven. six and a half per carry, eight for 52 on the ground with nine targets. 17 he was 10 total fantasy opportunity, points. and he was the running back 30. That's That's – Sad, but that was against the, the New York Jets. DeAndre Swift um, or Zeke. I'm guessing you're going to go Zeke, yeah. even though it's against Philly. It's, I don't care. 
Okay. Do you understand? Okay. No matter ask, what name I say. Go to Jason. Yeah, ask, ask me because uh, I, I <laughs> do think Swift <sighs> is a playable asset for sure. Um, yeah, Brooks, I'm playing golf over Gardner. That's yeah, what I'm doing. I don't blame you on that That's one. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah, that was a popular search on the Would site. Would you play golf over Gino? <laughs> yeah, I would. Would uh, you play Gino or Minshew? Okay, what world we am I living in here? Some fantasy just, algebra right I'm now. Just, yeah. yeah, I mean, if just I... Just trying to get back to that question. <laughs> look, I, the last thing I want to do is advise you this week. I think Gino and Minshew will end up within five points of each other. I don't know which direction. Okay, <laughs> that's probably true. Uh, Amon Ra, play him. Heck yeah. Uh, high PPR value this week. DJ Chark's a little bit more risky. The snaps are going down. Jameson Williams... Will eventually emerge, but I think you could dart throw that. I I'm not excited about it though. Yeah, I mean DJ it, Chark. You mean? Yeah. Okay. What did I say? Well, J I wasn't sure if you were saying dart throw Jameson Williams. No, to which, to which no, I was talking about. No I was me. talking about Chark. Yeah. Okay. I think I, Jameson Williams is more of a DFS yeah, dart. That's what I was going to bring up. His his price in DFS is very very low. He's been like in, his snaps. He was sure and production. <laughs> Absolutely, but not like his talent and Correct. not like yeah. the opportunity he could have ahead of him and the matchup. Uh, and then, you know, on the other side, this is the Sam Darnold streamer game, it in is. my opinion. Detroit's defense, uh, they're going to give up some yardage here, and they, they are dominant against running backs. You saw Deontay Foreman and Chuba get stuffed last week. Well, Deontay Foreman was awful. He was 10 carries for nine yards. It's because it's not Atlanta. And he fumbled. Like, this is going to be a De full Deontay passing Foreman, game situation. Deontay Foreman, do not play him. The Lions are number one on the year, number one over the last six weeks against running backs. DJ Moore could have a game. Terrace Marshall could have a game. Yep. Uh, and Sam Darnold, of course, will have to supply this offense with some production. I have looked at DJ Moore so many times in so many different leagues because everything, everything says... Oh, yeah, baby. And I just know that that's when you get tricked. That's when you can't do it. DJ Moore has the the amount of branding uh, that DJ Moore has put on my body uh, from yes. like, ah, I got yeah. you. Uh, gotcha I again. just don't want another one. Yeah, it's really hard. Really hard. All right, all the rankings, the start, sit tool on the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. More matchups tomorrow. Right now it's those uh, those hidden Starts of the week. Starts of the week. All right, this week, uh, this week, the theme behind my starts of the week is uh, maybe the sequel will be better than the original because three of my four starts of the week were yes. were in our starts of the week category last week in plus matchups that didn't pan out the you, way that we hoped. You need to wait for the trilogy. Going to the sequel is tough. Well, we'll find out. This week, my quarterback start of the week, I'm going back to it. It wasn't mine last week, but he was one of our starts of the week. Justin Herbert, you didn't get what you ordered in the mail. No, you did not. You got your lump of coal, but the Colts are the fifth best matchup for quarterbacks over the last four weeks. Again, consequential matchup for the Chargers. Elite weapons. Kirk Cousins went insane on them last week. Herbert is unfortunately in this category where, you know, if you play the ping pong game with Justin Herbert, you're missing the good weeks as much as you're missing the bad weeks. And I think you're going to have a much, much better performance where you have a regression to the mean in terms of where these touchdowns are coming from. Last week, they both came on the ground. I think he's good for 202 with a tremendous upside against the Colts. Yeah, and, and he didn't play so that, he didn't play bad last week. He had a won. bad fantasy output because there were two rushing touchdowns. He threw for 300 yards, and they won the game. So he's not playing poorly. Uh, I would absolutely be confident starting Justin Herbert. Uh, my start of the week is Tua. Uh, I am going to play Tua at home. He's been kind of mediocre over the last month. We've talked about the streakiness of the Dolphins, but he is in one of the games that shouldn't be affected by heavy weather this week at home in Miami. The Dolphins have the second highest team in played total of the week. I look for that, especially this week when I'm trying to make these decisions on quarterbacks. They have a 27 implied points. You know that that's going to come 
by Waddle and Hill, which means it comes via Tua. If the Dolphin in Dolphins wins this year, he's averaging 22 fantasy points and a 70% completion rate. Miami is four point home favorites versus Green Bay, so I think you can fire him up this week. My uh, rankings algorithm that combines you know the Vegas odds and all of these factors like fantasy points against no quarterback that it likes more than Tua this week. That's fair. Mine is my start of the week. It's Geno Smith. Teams have to throw against Kansas City. They're seeing the second highest opponent passer it's rate. Pro Bowler Geno Smith, Mike. Pro Bowler Geno Smith. I apologize. The Chiefs rank 31st in schedule adjusted fantasy points, and that includes the games like Jason alluded to with Malik Willis and Bryce Perkins. They have allowed a top 12 finish in 11 of 12 games. Uh, the you know recently. You just you have to throw on them, and I uh, I'm concerned about the weapons, but like I said about Russell Wilson did that with Jerry Judy. Cortland Sutton was not in that game. Like got, guys can just get it done because there's going to be enough opportunity that they have to go with the passing game. Let's try the sequel here. <laughs> Isaiah Pacheco is my running back start of the week again. The Revealed. Se yeah, the Seahawks are the best running back matchup in the league over the last five weeks. Uh, Pacheco's averaging 17 opportunities per game, 91 total yards. Uh, I will throw Jerick McKinnon's name into the mix here. I think both of them are great starts this week against the Seahawks. They're not going to be stoppable. I am going with Kenneth Walker the third in that cold weather game against Kansas City. He had 17 opportunities last week, including five targets. It's just a really good running back. He looked good last week. Obviously, it was a very difficult matchup. Had that late uh, breakoff run to kind of save his uh, fantasy day. But against Kansas City, 50% of his rushing yards have come on 15-plus yard runs, which is the highest rate in the NFL. He's averaging a first down on 23% of his rushing attempts. That's higher than Derrick Henry and Nick Chubb. And this Seattle-Kansas City game, second highest total of the week. Walker should be a solid RB2 this week. I'm going with J.K. Dobbins against the Atlanta Falcons. Since returning from the injury, his lines have been 13 for 125, 15 for 120, and a touchdown. Atlanta allowing the seventh most uh, expected points per rush attempt. I have him ranked firmly as a running back, to They are seven-point home favorites, and this is one of the weather games where it's okay. that I'm, I'm still going to lean on the running game. Mike Williams is my oh, start of the week at the wide receiver position. Get some volatility into your lineup in a, in a plus matchup. The Colts, look at what KG Osborne did last week. Look what physicality did. Mm, so DeAndre Carter, gotcha. <laughs> I don't think so. I think you've. I think one of the reasons why Osborne was so good was because he bullied this this uh, Colts defense. We know Big Mike's a streaky player, but if you look at the the one game where he exited on nine percent of snaps, if you throw that one out, he's averaging eight targets, seventy five yards. 12.8 fantasy points per game. That's where Lockett was. That's wide receiver eight category and points per game. Like Mike Williams, he may, it may be the bumpiest, you know, train ride like that you've gone on, but it's one that I think is going to pay dividends. You're going to get to your destination in week 16. Speaking of bumpy train rides named Mike, <laughs> I'm going with Mike Evans. Start of the week. It is his time. Evans has not scored a touchdown in 10 weeks, but he faces the Cardinals. The Cardinals have moved into first place, the most points allowed on the season, and opponents are throwing on Arizona at the second highest rate over expectation. He has seen nine targets in three of the last four weeks, and most importantly, he's guaranteed a touchdown this week. Now, where is it? This is just coming from me. Okay, so this is a Jason Moore this guarantee. This is a Jason Moore guarantee. All right, let's find out. My wide receiver start is the confidence bump for Darius Slayton against Minnesota. He is a fringe flex player. Totally understand that. But he's in a dome against Minnesota. And by the way, Minnesota's last seven home games, those games have averaged 55 total points. You want in on that action. Minnesota 31st in schedule adjusted fantasy points allowed to the wide receiver. They're allowing the most first downs. Via the pass, the second highest yards per attempt, second most total passing yards. We have been here many, many times. Uh, we're, we're just we're targeting the Minnesota Vikings because their secondary stinks. You did this with uh, Pity City last yep. week. Yep, and he was a PPR machine. All right, here's my uh, 
steal under panties. Yeah. All right. All right. Isaiah Likely is my <laughs> tight end start of the week. Wow. You're, you're that classifying that as steal? I don't I, I think you've got to upgrade your metal. The passing game right now in Baltimore is depleted. You just lost Duvernay now. He is out for multiple months. You don't have Bateman. You've had an underwhelming Mark Andrews. This is uh, this is a Baltimore offense that already ran two tight ends 58% of the time. It's going to become a higher percentage. And Isaiah likely is a slot wide receiver. So I am telling you to pick up a slot wide receiver in Baltimore Oof. where 73% of his targets came of, as him lining up as a slot wide receiver. Um, I know this is deep. This is like, you know, two weeks ago I told you Chig Okonkwo was an option in a committee at tight end for a team with no pass catchers. Sure. Isaiah likely this week in this matchup against Atlanta, which allows the fifth most passing yards per game, it is my deep tight end courage play of the week, just like Chig was. I think Isaiah likely will be very interesting. Wow. All right. I feel like I just – Found out who's in his DraftKings lineup. <laughs> we'll see tomorrow. I don't know. Uh, at tight end, I'm going with Mike's favorite tight end. Oh, yeah. Taysom Hill. Uh, this Love is that guy. going to be in that really gross ga game in Cleveland with bad weather where you're going to have to run the ball. I think both teams are going to be relying on the run game. And Taysom Hill, that's really what he is. He's going to be a wildcat running back. He should see eight to ten touches. I think that gives him a baseline that is better than a lot of these streaming tight end category guys. And obviously we know his upside. His upside is he can actually – uh, you know, break off a 40 yard touchdown run. Not a lot of guys can do that. The Browns rank dead last in expected points per rush attempt, 29th in 10 plus yard rush plays allowed. That seems like Taysom Hill's specialty. So he, to me, is uh, safe enough this week to, to chase his upside. And my tight end start of the week, it is Kate Otten against the Arizona Cardinals. Oh boy. It's the Arizona Cardinals, and that's why we are going with this. Admittedly, it is a little bit of a roulette wheel here where uh, it could end up like we saw last week where it wasn't Dulcich. It was a different tight end, and Cameron Brate is back. Cameron Brate ran 22 routes last week. Kate Otten was at 21, but Otten has been featured uh, throughout this entire season as, as a pass-catching tight end. You get Arizona. You get it on Christmas Day. They're allowing 15 points per game to the tight end. That's the most in the NFL, second most over the last decade. So if I mean back I to the Arizona well, yeah, I think hoping you get the right one. Exactly. I think we're all three of us were trying to give you. Should you not have a locked in tight end that you feel comfortable with? That's right. And you're just you're desperately looking on that waiver wire. I think that's these are three interesting options and I do think Mark Andrews will be very good this week as well I think I think we're going to see a little bit of a return of um, uh, his involvement in this offense we did get news that Kenneth Walker mm. uh, not practicing again with the ankle injury today have you ever seen an update that says uh, can, a player is here in flat shoes no cleats I don't even oh that's all it means is yeah, no cleats no cleats okay, I thought I meant like no arch in the foot oh I thought whatsoever. you meant snowshoes which might fit the week you know no, but it's, it's I've never heard someone's oh they're here but they're in flats before you push that button obviously not 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 great for uh start of the week I would prefer my players playing but Andy should Kenneth Walker not play would you start Geno Smith or Gardner <laughs> Minshew <laughs> please I'm dying well <laughs> I mean, the hard part is, is if if uh, you've got the Devonte Smith stack, and that factors into my mind every time you bring this up. And I know you're you're just tilting over there. I don't know if you even really want my answer as you headbutt your microphone. I just, but you know, you get you get both sides of it, right? It, it works out for Gardner. You get the Devonte Smith side. He's going to work out for him. Like they, Dallas is going to score points on Philadelphia. These are actually two of the t cheapest defenses in DFS this week: the Cowboys and Philadelphia. When have you seen that all year long? Like the expectation is points are going to be put up on the board. So I don't know, man. Yeah. I don't know. Mike Me has Geno either. Smith as a start of the week. Why don't you ask that guy? <laughs> all right. You let's, ready for boom, boom? Let's go. Jason Moore's Ironclad, Locked and Loaded, 100% Guaranteed Boom Boom Kicker of the Week. 
Now, last week on Boom Boom Kicker, <laughs> I teamed up with two fart bags named Mike and Andy. <clears throat> it was like a beautiful dream. A buffed up wrestling team as our enemies shouted, Oh no! <laughs> From the top rope, like pure art, a trifecta power bomb of short, vanquishing the one Graham Gano. <laughs> Again, so we're Woo! we're fighting yeah. the kicker that is going to be good. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> we're knocking some sense into him while he knocks that ball through them uprights. Which did work out. The, the Fighting the kicker worked out last week with uh, Chase McLaughlin. Right? Yeah, I mean, so far with you two guys in on the story, 100% hit rate. Uh, I, you were getting a lot of love for your well-researched well, boom-boom kicker. Well, he, he did do a lot of the kicking through the uprights. That was a trifecta power bomb of Shart. Is mm -hmm. that the... Uh, yeah, no. Yeah, that's bad. I think that wraps the, things up here on the Fantasy Footballers for Thursday. Uh, follow us on Twitter. Stay tuned as we make decisions about tonight. I still don't know what I'm doing with Mr. Slayton and Zay Jones. Good luck. Oh, boy. Have a good one, everybody. See you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.